Okay, so in today's math lesson, uh, it was all about using uh, mental strategies and our uh, power of estimation, if you would, to solve these, uh, these algorithms, these division algorithms. For example, yesterday we were talking about how uh, we're going to use a, uh, a method of multiplying by 10 over 10 to get rid of this decimal or to make this 2.5 a whole number. And we wind up with, let's say, 25 over here and 3,200 over here, and then we can uh, start multiplying our value. Now, the key to the entire concept is this guy right here, the fact that it's 10 over 10, because 10 over 10 equals 1, which means well, if I'm multiplying anything by 1, the value of my original number uh, doesn't change at all. And that's a great or, or an important concept to understand because that means I could literally make these this fraction anything over itself. It doesn't have to be 10, it could be 8, it could be 15, whatever I want to do. Point is the answer just doesn't change because I'm multiplying it by 1. So whatever I wind up with over here after I'm done dividing, the answer should be the same as what I started with. Okay, So keeping that in mind, Let's take a look at closer, a closer look at number four using our new found information. So here's what I want to do. So I have 3 .5, uh, 325 over 2.5. Now, instead of just multiplying by 10, what I could do is I notice that I have 2.5 here. What if I were to uh, double this deal instead? So instead of 2.5, I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2. Now that's interesting because 2.5 or $2.50, if you would, times 2 gives me just 5, which is great. But I have to remember I need to multiply this by 2, the top guy, 325. So that gives me 650. Now here's a number I could divide also, which is kind of cool. So maybe you can divide that in your head, maybe not. Uh, but the point is it's now an easier problem than what I started with. And I'm using something other than 10 over 10. Because what I can do now is I can actually multiply this again by 2 over 2 just to do it. Because watch what happens here. I wind up with 10 over here. And if I double 650, I wind up with, let's see, 1300. 1300, zero, zero, which is great because check out this problem. I wind up with 1300 over 10. And that means I can divide by one place value. I wind up with 130 as a final answer without ever really having to run a full algorithm. So that's a neat little trick and or, uh, or, or skill to have with division when it comes to dividing because uh, it can make it the problem a whole lot easier than what it normally is. Now sometimes you can just look at a problem and see those types of things. Other times you look at a problem and maybe there's a nice little trick involved and, and you just don't see it. So sometimes you just have to work the whole thing out. So 6.4, I mean, you can make this one a little better on your life. I suppose maybe I'm just going to divide by 2 over 2. It doesn't have to be multiplication. Maybe this becomes 3.2, which is kind of nice. And then the uh, top guy becomes, or the numerator becomes 59.2, right? Half of uh, 118 is 59.2. And then maybe I multiply this by 10 over 10 to remove and I wind up with 32 here and 592 here because maybe you'd just rather multiply or divide, excuse me, 592 by 32 rather than uh, what you would have normally if you just multiply both by 10 over 10. You'd wind up with 1,184 over 64. I think I'd rather divide this guy. So then I set things up, 32 into... 592. I ran out of tricks. I'm looking at this thing and I don't know what else I can do, so I just have to divide now. But I do realize that this is going to go once, so maybe it's a nicer problem to deal with that I created for myself. So I have 272, and I don't know that one, but I am going to run an estimate. So this becomes about 30, and this will be 600 for my original guy anyway. And I wind up with 20. So my my uh, my final answer should be in the range of 20. So all right. So let's take a look at this guy into 272. So 32 into 272 is my division problem there. Um, now I'm going to estimate that because I'm looking for something I can multiply 32 by. So there's the there's my 30. 
this I can keep is 27, which is nice. I get rid of this, and my target is 9. So 32 times 9, let's see how close we can get to the 272. There's an 18, that's a 27 plus 1, 28. Oop, too high. 32 times 8, let's try that one. 16, 24, 25. So there's an 8, a 256 is what I wind up with. Let's borrow. There's a 6 right there. There's a 1. Now we need to get into the tenths area here. So I have 32 doesn't go into 16, but it does go into 200. Uh, excuse me, one. 32 doesn't go into 16, but it does, does go into 160 tenths. Okay. Question is how many times? So let's do. Let's go over here. 32 into my 160. Oh, 30. I'm going to estimate. Sorry. 30. We're going to leave one. We'll make that 150. Let's get rid of those. That's a five. So I need to do here 32 times 5 tenths. Okay, there's a 15, 16, there it is. 160 tenths, 5 tenths times, which forces my decimal right there, 5 tenths, for 160 tenths. And I don't have anything left, so there you have it. 18.5, or 18 and 5 tenths. Okay, a little sloppy on the board all over the place, but... I'm hoping you get the point here using these little strategies. Now, the other part of today's lesson is using estimation to actually uh, decide, and I'm going to use estimation anyway, to decide where dec decimal points should go. Now, the question is, where do I put that decimal point in my answer right here? Well, for me, the best way for me to find out that answer would be to estimate. So this guy here is going to be 2, and this guy here I can make, let's say, 84. Right, and so this is going to go four times, two times. So my decimal should go right after that 36 if this go, if this is going to make sense. So that needs to be 36.25. Uh, so nice and quick, and that's sort of how things are rolling for this guy over here. Now for this guy over here, same type of thing, except I need to find out where that decimal goes uh, for this guy. And this is interesting now because I'm going to divide by. Uh, something, but let's see here. So if I have this guy, one, eight, three, that's a triple digit right here, and I have an answer of 3.5 over here. Well, if my 52, my 5 is going, my 52, my 5 is going to go into the 18, but my 52 is going to go into this guy right here. So we should have a 52 into 1 8, somewhere around there, 150, and I'm playing a little bit and using my estimation skills, uh, that should be 180, so my decimal should be after that too, if this is going to work out, because I need a 50 into 180, and that's going to give me that 3 for the whole number. If I put that decimal anywhere else, um, it's not going to work out too well. Okay, so using my powers of estimation, I'm finding out where that decimal point needs to be. Okay, so that's the deal, folks. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.